You have worked in China for seven years, as I said, and you traveled to many, many rural areas in China and seen things for yourself. What is the most striking change in your eyes that China's poverty alleviation and rural revitalization strategy has brought to these villages? Yes, as you rightly said, over the past seven years, uh, uh, as part of my job, I've traveled to the most uh, poor and remote areas of China to design, supervise, uh, assess our projects, or interact uh, with the beneficiaries of our projects. Uh, um, the most striking changes that I observed, uh, um, I can easily say improvements in the infrastructures, uh, uh, roads, uh, in uh, irrigation canals, uh, uh, electrification, or I can also say reforestation, entire degraded area that have been reforested as part of the reforestation program of the government. But the most striking uh, change that I observed is probably intangible. Uh, when I was interacting with the beneficiary, I observed an increased sense of optimism and confidence in the future. And this is, uh, as I said, intangible, but very telling of the real impact that uh, China uh, poverty reduction had on its people. Um, is there a scenario, a scene that uh, was imprinted in your mind up till this day that you could share with us, you know, for the moment? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I recall uh, in 2016, uh, I visited with uh, uh, my president one of our close projects in uh, Shanxi province. And I recall I was uh, uh, shown the pictures uh, of the project prior uh, to IFAD intervention and after IFAD interaction, intervention. What I recall was uh, uh, a road, a road that connected uh, a rural village down to the county town. Uh, before the road was constructed, uh, people were taking up to five hours to reach the county, uh, the county town. With that road, uh, it took 40 minutes. Uh, that improved uh, scholarization. Uh, children could go to school much easier and most, uh, most importantly, farmers could sell their products to the county markets uh, at a better price. That was a striking image. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, the collaboration between IFAD and China. We understand that actually uh, this year China and IFAD are marking 40 years of their collaboration, right? IFAD gave China the first loan 40 years ago. Uh, help us understand a bit more of how this was carried out. What kind of support has IFAD been giving China and how has China made use of the support to really capitalize right, to help bring farmers out of extreme poverty? Okay. Well, my organization, the IFA, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, is a specialized agency of the United Nations whose mandate is to uh, eradicate rural poverty, promote food security and rural development. And that was precisely the agenda of China at the time, 40 years ago. Mm. So over the past 40 years, IFA and China have worked hand in hand to eradicate poverty. Uh, over the past uh, uh, 40 years, uh, we have worked uh, uh, in uh, 20, uh, 21 provinces in central and western China, really targeting the most uh, poor and remote areas of the country, working with uh, uh, poor um, smallholder farmers, uh, women, ethnic minorities. This was really the, the target group. And uh, uh, we, are, we are proud to say that we have uh, uh, been a, a partner of China in this uh, successful path. How has the Chinese authorities um, been working with you? Of course, IFAD is only part of China's you know, efforts of international collaboration to revitalize, the, to, to bring farmers out of poverty. But how have they been receiving, receiving your, your loans and also the expertise that you're able to provide? And how has that relationship probably transformed over the years now that China knows more? China has done a bit in terms of helping farmers come out of extreme poverty. How has, the cha how has that relationship changed? Uh, absolutely. Very good question. Um, first of all, let me say that uh, uh, the government is the real owner and implementer of, uh, of the projects. We provide loan. We provide support uh, to the government in designing the project uh, and uh, later on uh, in uh, provide technical assistance, technical support uh, during implementation. But the owner of the project is, uh, is the government. So everything that has been achieved is really uh, credit to, 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 to the government, to the local authorities. Uh, 
um, how the relationship has changed. Certainly at the beginning, uh, China was primarily a recipient of financial resources. So if it was uh, primarily a donor, let's use this word, we were providing financial and technical assistance, and that was uh, the main uh, characteristic of our relationship. However, as, uh, as uh, uh, time passed, as China has developed, uh, the nature of our relationship has changed. Certainly, the financial resources uh, we provided were still important, but were not any more important for the monetary value of it. It was more important for the um, uh, technical uh, 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 part associated to, to that. At the same time, China has developed so, so, so fastly that uh, uh, the, the lessons, uh, the, the experience uh, that was generated through this project became, uh, um, became a source of knowledge for IFAD itself to bring that knowledge in other countries where we operate. So this relationship of giving and receiving has characterized the, evol uh, the evolution of our relationship with China. How interesting. Do you want to give an, a concrete example or a current project that you have been uh, working together with uh, your Chinese partners to explain exactly how China is able to feed back or to help inform other Area, other countries that are vying to, you know, strip their villages out of uh, extreme poverty. Sure. Uh, let me use this uh, this example. Uh, in uh, um, late 2000, uh, if it start uh, introducing in uh, in remote areas of, of China new technology, biogas technology, uh, that uh, was uh, was relatively new in uh, in rural areas. By uh, basically household by biogas digesters. That uh, technology was uh, so successful that not, not only was uh, um, replicated in other parts of China, but, uh, but was later on taken by IFAD and introduced uh, in other countries, particularly in Africa, through other IFAD projects. Mm. That's a clear example of how a successful experience in China became then the source of uh, uh, an innovation in other countries, in other regions of the world. Right now, China is looking to revitalize the countryside. Basically, when people come out of extreme poverty, what to do next, right? So that they don't fall back into extreme poverty and they, you know, grow stronger, richer, more prosperous. And IFAD is looking forward to, uh, to the future of collaboration with China, I understand. So how do these goals, can't, you know, are compatible with each other? Um, another very good question. Basically, rightly said, until uh, 2020, the main focus uh, of, uh, of uh, China government was to uh, bring uh, uh, people out of poverty. Now that the, uh, this goal has been achieved, uh, the next challenge is uh, to keep uh, those people that are uh, above uh, the poverty line, but, uh, yet, uh, but still close to that, not to fall or fall back into poverty. Mm. And we have seen, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, recently during the case of the COVID pandemic, when uh, basically uh, we, we know that everyone is potentially uh, can contract a virus, but, uh, but those that are already vulnerable are those that can be mostly impacted by, right. by, by the, the virus. That those segments of society, the most vulnerable, are those that, uh, uh, that, can, uh, that are more at risk or falling in, in, a, poor, in right. a poor situation. So our our for our support to to China uh, in uh, this new uh, framework, the rural revitalization framework, focus on um, creating economic opportunities in rural areas, uh, so that uh, people can increase their income, their economic status, and remain mm -hmm. out of poverty. At the same time, attracting people back into uh, rural areas, thus divide, uh, bridging the, the gap between rural and urban areas. Yeah. Um, so what else do you think China can do, especially in keeping these people motivated, uh, give them the support they need, but really to keep them motivated and looking forward to the future? What else do you think China can do on top of what they have already been doing? Yeah, uh, let me let me tell you one thing. During our visit in rural areas, we were, um, you know, interviewing people. Many uh, young uh, fathers and mothers were obliged to move to urban areas for a great part of the year to 
because basically rural areas did not offer sufficient employment opportunity for them to, to survive. But all of them were ready to go back to rural areas and live in rural areas where the family live uh, if there were uh, employment opportunities. Mm. So I think the, 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 the broad the, the strategy is to invest in rural areas to create additional employment opportunities, to create uh, investment opportunities so that people, the active uh, uh, part of the population, uh, return or remain in rural areas. That's, that's really the key for, for the future. Mm. What about you? What is your next plan? You've already stayed in China for seven years. Any uh, plan to stay even longer? Well, this doesn't depend on me. China is uh, an interesting and fast-evolving country that uh, I would be very happy to stay longer. Uh, there are so many challenges ahead, and I would be very happy to, to be part of that. But if I'm not to be there, I'm sure that my successor will be uh, as radiant, as committed as I was to you know, support China in the next uh, uh, revitalization agenda. Thank you very much for all that you have done. And of course, thank, thank IFAD for all that uh, collaboration, that wonderful collaboration you've had over the years with China. And uh, many thanks once again to Matteo Machisil, Country Director in the Asia and Pacific Dire Division of uh, IFAD. And that's it for this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle Liu Xin in Beijing. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.